In the next section of lecture, we're going to talk about how to do line, surface, and volume integrals in three dimensions. You've probably done this in your math and physics classes, but let me show you a systematic way that makes it easier in all three coordinate systems. Let's start with the example of the rectangular coordinate system, which of course has x, y, and z directions. If we wanted to do an integral, we always want to be able to use a small unit of volume. So here's an example of a small unit of volume in the rectangular coordinate system. It has a dx part, it has, sorry, a dy part there, a dx part here, and a dz part there. So if I wanted to find this volume, I'd integrate over dx, dy, and dz. So this is my dv component. Notice that this is a scalar, that there's no vector defining the volume. But there is a vector defining a line in a surface. Let's consider the line first, because that's the next easiest one. Let's suppose that I have a line going off in this direction. It's in the xz plane, so the y part is zero. But I can see that it has some dx part and that it has some dz part. But if I wanted to define this line, I would say that it has x dx plus y dy plus z dz, and that is my dl component, or my differential unit of length, and that's a vector. If I wanted to consider the differential unit of surface, I would go back to my little volume, my little cube, and I would see that there are three types of surface there. There's a front and a back, there's a left and a right, and there's a top and a bottom. Let's begin with this front part right here. Now how am I going to define the front part? The way I define each element of surface is with a vector that's associated with it. The vector is the outward going normal. So it's perpendicular to that surface and it's outward going. You can imagine that if you filled this with water and you poked it with a pin right here, that's the direction that the water would squirt. So this water would squirt in the x direction. In fact, it would squirt in the positive x direction. That's how we define this frontal surface. That's the x surface. Well, what's the area of that surface? It's dy by dz. dy by dz. That's this surface right here. That's the front. Now let's look at a side. Let's see, if I poked this one right here, the water would squirt out in the y direction, and that surface would be dx by dz. Sure thing, there it is right there. The y-directed surface has a dx dz component. That's the dsy term. Now if we looked at the top and we poked the top, the water would squirt out in the z direction, and that element of surface is a dx dy surface. So here was here is the top. This was the right. If we wanted a surface on the back, let's imagine what would happen there. What if I poked the back of that cube? Then it would go in the minus x direction and it would still have a dy dz term. What about if I want the bottom? The bottom is going to squirt out in the minus z direction and it's going to have a dx dy term. And how about the left? The left term is going to go in the minus y direction and it's going to have a dx dz term. Now these three terms, dl, ds, and dv, are differential elements of line, surface, and volume. If we're going to use a line integral, we integrate by dl. If we're going to use a surface integral, we integrate by ds. And if we're going to do a volume integral, we integrate by dv. In just a moment, we'll show you how that all works.